So hello everybody and welcome to another Power BI video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to get data from GitHub and how you schedule refresh it. There are some instances where your schedule refresh will fail and I'll show you how to fix it. So this is part one of a series of videos where we're going to create a vaccine tracker. And um, in part one today we just get the data. So let's get started. Okay guys, so our world in the data, GitHub, they actually publish a lot of COVID information. So you have infections, deaths, you have uh, hospitalizations, uh, vaccinations, testing, all kinds of stuff. And this is where we're going to grab the data for our vaccinations. We're going to actually grab vaccination and infection because on the infections table, they have location data. So let me show you. If I go here to vaccinations, you're going to get the links and the Power BI file, obviously, as always, so don't worry about that. So if we go to vaccinations, you'll see that there is a location here, but this location does not have con uh, continent, and I do want to have that. So I'm going to grab the location from the infections file. Once you're here in vaccinations, there are two places where you can grab the data. You have vaccinations.csv and country data. Here is the vaccinations by country. And to get the data from here, you need to create a function like we did for the COVID data. And this is when the refresh, schedule refresh will fail. But because they have a file for all countries in one place, we're actually going to grab it from here. So to get data from GitHub, you have to click on the raw, copy the URL and Open Power BI, get data, get data from web, paste it, and transform data. Okay, let's see. And here we have the information that we need. So use first rows as headers and one thing I want to know is to have proper um, headers, so capital letters on the first letter, so we're going to do that manually. Proper headers, table, transform column names, and then this is the previous step, promoted headers, and then you, you just write the text proper and that will capitalize our headers. I have actually a video where I show you all kinds of header transformation. Just go and check it out. So as you can see now, we have proper capitalization of the headers, which is so wonderful. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to get a location table, right? And in the infection and location table, the UK, the United Kingdom, is so such United Kingdom. While here for vaccinations, they they have Wales, they have England, they have Scotland, and Gibraltar separately. And I don't want that. I just want to put them together. So what we're going to do is actually change that. So I'm going to show you. You know, you can just go one by one and replace it. But I, again, I have a video where I show you how to conditionally replace everything in one go because I have a video on that. I am actually not going to explain it here, but I will post the link below so you can actually go and check it out. So I'm going to do add, no, I'm going to add just a new line and paste the code. Again, this code, you'll get it on the video that will pop up somewhere here. But what it basically does is it goes and it says if you find England, or Wales, or Scotland, or Gibraltar, just put United Kingdom, right? And this is replace multiple values. Let's give it a proper name, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a week uh, a week um, column. And the reason for that, I, we are going to have a calendar. We're going to do time intelligence later on, but I want to have the the week um, column formatted as text. 
And uh, in order to be able to do that, you know, I'm going to do it on this table. There, there are other reasons too. Otherwise, I would use the calendar table, but I won't be able to do it in this case. So the first thing I need to do is if you go in here, you will see that I have date, but it's not formatted as date yet. So in order to be able to get weeks from date, we'll need to first convert the column into date. Date from. We're going to put date. So this will get the column date and put it as date. The next thing that we're going to do is convert it to week. Date week of year and when you tab it the other one disappears do you remember that i did an intelligence thing an intelligence video where i'll show you all these things so unfortunately that's not a good way to do it so now we have the date converted to date now we get the week number and what i want to do is i want to sort them and i want to sort them by the data here starts with 53 of previous year of the 2020. So I want to have 53, 52, 1, 2. Mm -hmm. And this is the main reason why I need to do it here, because that type of sorting I don't want in my calendar table. So the first thing that we need to do is to this date week of year is going to give me a number. I need to convert it to text. So I'm going to do text dot from close the parenthesis and now that I have it I'm going to pad it because I want to have I don't want to have one two three I want to have oh one oh two oh three I think it looks better for the eyes so I'm going to do text pad start ah oh, it disappears I'm used to doing that with tags text from don't have your M intelligence it'll break okay so text pad, text pad start you say how um, number of paddings and what do you want to pad it with and it's a zero and because it's text you have to put the zero in parentheses and this we can get rid of oh no and this should give me the week number right so custom is going to be called week i think i call it week only so, and now I need to have another column to be able to sort, because again, if I sort this by, if I will convert it to number and sort it by number, it will start 1, 2, 3, and then 52, 53. But on my line chart, you're going to see it on the coming videos, I want to have 53, 52, 53, 1, 2, 3. And for that, we need to create our own um, sorting for this. So I'm going to do custom column. Is going to be called sort week and here we need to do a few things so I'm going to paste it because it's not too difficult but tell you what it does so let me separate it so yeah the first thing it does is it grabs the column date and converts it to a date and then gets the date the year of it and here it converts the year into text because we're going to concatenate year with uh, week number and put it as a number. That's how we're going to sort. So we need to convert it to text. And then here is a text text pad start that we had in the beginning as week. So you will see what it does. You see, it gets year and week. And this we're going to um, put as numbers. But before that, let me get rid of the tables that I don't want. We have quite a few columns, so I think it's easier to just go here and choose columns instead. So I want to have location, date, total vaccination, no, people vaccinated and people fully vaccinated, and then my weeks. The rest of the stuff I don't want. Here we have them. And now I am going to change types. So this is going to be date. This is going to be a whole number. This is going to be a whole number. This is going to be text. And my sorting is going to be a number. Otherwise it won't sort, right? So whole number. Now, people vaccinated, people fully vaccinated. What is the difference? Well, depending on the vaccine that you're using, you need to be vaccinated more than once to get full coverage. So to get full protection. 
So what I care about is when the world has got the population fully vaccinated. So I'm going to leave people vaccinated there because I might want to use it anyhow. But what we're going to use in our report is the fully vaccinated. So I want to know when everybody has full coverage. Okay. And these we're going to call vaccinations. And that's how we get the vaccination data. Let's close and apply. Let it load and save it, especially save it. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab the uh, infections. And um, let me save it. And um, grab the population for the. I'm going to actually use the infections table later on for other things I want to do, but. Uh, version 2. But um, for now, we're going to just use that table to grab the location. So if I, I go back to GitHub, you'll see the vaccination. I'm going to show you the infections table and you'll see why I want that instead. Come on. So if we go here to locations under vaccinations, you'll see that it has the location, it has the ISO code, and it doesn't have the continent. Other, obviously, with the three ISO code, you can grab it from other place where the continent is. But because it is here, where is it? Here it is, all the data for COVID. View row. So here you have uh, the ISO code, the continent, and the location, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to copy that, go back to Power BI, and then New Source Web. Paste the link. And Okay, and we're going to grab again just the columns that we need. So we're going to do it the same way. We're going to use use rows as headers. I am going to choose columns, and I want only. Come on, baby. Choose columns. I want to have ISO continent location, nothing else. The rest I don't care. I'm going to have proper headings the same way as we did before. So proper headings. And it is table, if you remember, table transform, column names, and then the previous removed all the columns, and then you do text proper. That's all you need to do. And then you go here and you call the last step, proper headings, done. And the last thing that we need, we just need unique values. So remove duplicates. So we get the value just once. And this is our location. Oh, they have also a population. So sorry, they have actually a population that we want to have. Um, a population column because we want the population. There you go. Okay. So how that this is a whole number and instead of location I'm going to call it population it's going to act as both population okay and then what we always need is a calendar so I am going to you know I've given you my calendar before if you don't have it yet you can just grab it from this file I'm going to show you. I'm just copying it just a second. So 
in here, I'm going to go new source, blank, advance, paste. The data starts from 2020. Oh, the infection, infection data starts from 2019, obviously, so we're going to leave it as 2019. Put calendar, home, close and apply. And we'll load the data. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to publish it to the Power BI service while it loads and we're going to schedule refresh it and i'm going to show you what you need to do in case it does not schedule refresh so now that the data has loaded we are going to publish it into power bi i'm going to publish it to a premium producer capacity workspace because i want to schedule refresh pdfs to my email i'll tell you why <laughs> on future videos but just for now let's go to powerbi.com I'm going to sign in. There is, if you don't have power as a premium producer, there is a test trial, so you can get it for free for now. The reveal, the big reveal of the pricing will come at some point. This is December, they haven't done it yet. Uh, but um, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to create a new workspace. I already have one. This is the one that is live. So I'm going to create a new workspace for these. It's going to be Vax. Scene Tracker YouTube and Advanced Premium Capacity. That's the one that you have to turn on. And this is my premium producer, right? So again, sign up for the test trial and you will be able to see this premium per user. So you click Save. You see the icon there. It means it's a premium per user. And now that we have that, we can actually go and publish it. Okay, so we go to publish and we'll find our new vaccine tracker to YouTube. There we have it and publish it there. Great. Now we click on it. It'll take us to the actual report and I'm going to show you here. You go to dot 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 settings and the only thing that you need to do is to say that it's anonymous this is public data and it will refresh right anonymous public data refresh so now you will be able to schedule refresh this thing i'm not going to schedule refresh it because i already have another one scheduled refresh but here's the thing if you create a function the the, the thing i did when i first created this is i created a function to get data from country from the country folder and i could i wasn't able to schedule refresh afterwards what you need to do if that happens to you i'm going to show you you need to split actually on the web connector the path so i'll show you this is the one that i have live so if I go to the source, so this is how it looks. What you can see is that I, the web context path, I just split it. I have a relative path. And if you do it like this, it will schedule refresh even if you have functions in it. There, there is one catch though, and it is that this has to be accessible to us in the web. And thankfully for GitHub it is. So in case it's not scheduling refreshing, just separate the path like this and then you will be good to go. Okay. Okay, so in part two, we're actually going to create the visualization, the, the way that I wanted to visualize this data. There's a million stories you can tell with this data set. But uh, I'm going to show you how I created this. And again, if you want to know more about how to get data from GitHub, for example, with the functions and stuff, I have the COVID video that you probably want to check it out. That is in there. So I'll see you again on Wednesday where we continue with this project. Until then, take care and bye-bye.